Hey there guys, today we're going to take a look at something completely different for the channel. We're going to do an O-Gauge set unboxing and review, but of course, you all know my buying habits. It's not just any normal O-Gauge set. It is of course the brand new Lionel Lion Chief GE Demonstrator Stack Train Set. If you guys saw my community post this weekend, I made a trip to the Lionel store in Concord Mills for the first time, and of course couldn't leave empty handed, so this is one of the items that followed me home. I was very excited to find it for a good price, get my hands on it at last, and hopefully get the first coverage out there in this set because, like a lot of O-Gage items, it seems either everyone shoots it and videos it, or no one pays any attention to it at all. So, we're going to remedy that if you're looking more details on this set, what you're getting for the money, and what all comes in a brand new Lionel starter set. So without further ado, let's get started. So one cool thing I appreciate right off the bat is the package design. This is a course based on GE 2015, the ET44 demonstrator. I really like the theme box. That's cool. It's very crisp, it's clean, and it shows off everything you want to see, minus the engine and like a little box window. You can see the Lion Chief remote on the left. Of course, this locomotive is equipped with Bluetooth as well, so you won't exactly need that all the time. And for the back side, you get a little promo showing off some track layouts, what you can do with like accessories, freight cars, and of course showing you how to work the Bluetooth features via the Lion Chief app. One immediate thing I appreciate, I'm sure families all across the country do as well, this train set box is manageable. You know, used to when you bought a set, it was this very long and bulky package. You couldn't store it easy. This thing's fitting on a single couch cushion. And also, as I found out, if you go to the Lionel store, will fit in your standard brown bag. But good luck hiding where you went shopping, because this is a pretty easy catch tail for anyone who knows the logo. Okay, so for opening the box, we're just going to do this quick and easy. It opens from the top. One really cool feature, just so you can see, the days of all the styrofoam and all that are gone. Instead, everything's in a nice, clear plastic tub. And I like this because it's all modular and you can get everything out. So, you pull the track. This is all new fast track, which I've been needing for some time, so I'm happy with this. Next up, we'll do the cars. The only thing you'll hear rattling, I had a silica gel packet burst. So, that'll be bouncing a little bit, but these look awesome right out of the gate. I really like the simplified packaging. This makes the process a lot easier. So first up, here's the transformer. The power pack that plugs right into the uh, Lion Chief track section. Lion Chief remote. And the tier 4 number 2015. Now for all the rivet counters out there, please note this is a starter set locomotive. It's not meant to be an award winner, but it is a nice representation of 2015, as we're going to see in just a minute. Alright, so next up we have the stack cars. These are really, really well done for a starter set. These are in the TTX new image paint scheme, so unlike the older cars that had the black and white lettering, these have the nice new burgundy TTX logo. So one really cool thing, this last car comes with a plastic EOT. Now I don't know if it works just yet, it does not look like it does, but that's still really cool to have in a starter set. Uh, it should be noted the trucks are metal, they're not roller bearing of course, but you know it's a starter set, it's not going to be perfect. But the cars have good weight, the details look really nice. This is everything you'd want a starter set car to be because you can bounce it around, give it a couple beatings, and it should be A-OK. -okay. The containers, very simple, straightforward. They lock into place. There's some pegs in the locomotive box, little black plastic pegs, which we're going to attach, and they will connect your containers like so. Okay, so here's an overview of the track included. You get eight curves. These are 036 two standard straights, and two more we'll call them specialty pieces. So the first one on deck is the terminal track. So you'll literally plug the transformer from the plug-in outlet straight into here, and there's your track voltage. So this is a nice new system where you're basically getting constant voltage for the track, so you can run your Lionel Lion Chief trains. Uh, you cannot run generic Lionel equipment on this because that runs on a variable voltage, you know, so the trains will cycle. These are built to run on constant voltage, just like the bigger command control trains. So if you have Lion Chief, you're A-OK. -okay. If you're trying to run like your post-war or other Lionels, you're going to need another transformer for that. But off the bat, this is perfect for Lion Chief. So this is the aforementioned plug and play track section. I did not know this was in here, so let's just say you get an automatic gateman, a signal, or something you want to power from the track. You can do that in this set. This is really cool. This is basically the equivalent, you know, like in the older sets when you got an uncoupling track or anything to activate the action car. So kudos to Lionel for including this. I'm glad to see this in there instead of just another straight section. So overall, eight curves, four straights, 
Very basic oval, but that's really all you need for a starter set. Now, if you've never messed with Fast Track before, I'm going to give you a quick crash course on how to assemble it. The cool thing is, you know, traditional o gauge track has three big pins. This has the two mains, and then these little center tabs conduct the power. So all you'll do is take it, and wait for the click, and you are good to go. It's very robust. It's a very solid connection. The one thing you do want to make sure of when you do run your train a lot, keep these clean because I've got older fast track and you will drop the power. You'll have some sections that act weird. Just go over them, clean the top of the rails, clean the little tabs themselves, and it's going to make your life a lot easier when you put more mileage on this track. All right, so enough of the unboxing stuff. Let's get to the fun things that everyone wants to see, the locomotive and rolling stock in detail. Now, before we get going too deep, I'm going to note a few things. Number one, rivet counters look away now because this is not your scale model. <laughs> this is a toy train set locomotive. This is meant to be a starter set piece. It ain't meant to be perfect. So flashy paint, boxy metal handrails, details that are kind of beat around the bush a little bit. This is all par for the course, but that's okay. This is a starter set locomotive. It's meant to be derailed, played with, and come back for a few more hits, which it will do very well given that there's less detail parts to break off, and a kid can handle this very easily. That said, this engine is a bit of an anomaly because normally we see Lionel do a full-scale version and then maybe shrink it down because the tooling's present. Kind of like how they did the Polar Express where you had the O gauge, you had the S gauge, and then the HO kind of came from the S gauge molding shrunk down. So here's hoping Lionel has a scale tier 4 plan for 2021 because as HO scale has shown, the tier 4 is a very good market to tap into, and with no one else really doing them, this is a perfect entryway. They've got the base model here with the toy version. I don't foresee a upscale being too hard to do. So let's start off on the front end. The decoration is really good. This is a very vibrant and splashy paint job. I love it. So one nice thing that I'm really appreciative of, because a lot of manufacturers screw this up, GE logos are all clear and crisp. The printing's really well done. There's no smudging. There's no blatant overprints it's all really clear even on the front here where it goes over the molded in grabs and one of the latches it's clean it looks like it should so we'll carry along the side and for a stripe logo like this this is tricky to get clean and now there's a few spots in the paint where it's not perfect but from cab up smooth sailing the roof actually has what looks like a PTC antenna array so that's a really cool feature for a starter set GE nose logo looks great 2015 printing is really crisp both on the number boards and on the side of the nose cab logo looks awesome the swoosh carrying on down the side is nice and smooth so that's a plus truck detail you're not gonna get anything crazy but this looks like a really solid GE high ad truck the truck side frames are of course metal so that's a nice gives it a nice little weight and heft the couplers are unfortunately plastic, but again, starter set locomotive is to be expected. Fuel tank detail isn't half bad. It is shrunk down to navigate 036, but you do have the printing on the side, so you've got the sight glass. That looks nice. The handrails, they're thick and blocky, but again, to be expected. So we'll go on down the side so you can take a better look at the stripe details. There's only a few really noticeable paint bl uh, blemishes, but you've got to look for them and namely right there in the cracks. But that's always hard to do on a stripe livery and something like this. Now, on a full scale model, I'd expect you to see it right, but this is a starter set engine. And if it's not scratched now, it's gonna get scratched when a kid's running it, derails it, etc. The Evo series logo looks good, the font's right. This is something some manufacturers struggle to get correct. MTH had the best one to date, in my opinion, on all their Evo demonstrators, 2010 especially, so. That's a plus, and I'm really not, really glad to see it well done. The rear of the engine looks good, too. Again, a lot of molded-on details here, but it's still present. You've actually got some molded-in air lines, the spare knuckle, again, the plastic couplers, um, rear metal handrails. It'd be nice if we had the grabs, but again, we'll probably see that on a full-scale version. The rear headlights look a lot better than the front. They're smooth. They blend into the body well. Rear radiator number plate is present. That looks awesome, so I'm glad to see them take the step. Even if it is really just a sticker, it still looks nice. So we've turned the engine on its side so you can take a top-down look at the whole casting. This is not bad at all. I mean, like I said earlier, you've got the AC unit, what looks like basic PTC antenna array. That's really well done. The lift rings are cast in, but it still looks the part. Going on to the down, we've got kind of a funky two-chime horn, which is not far off from the prototype because the actual 2015 had a two chime on the back and a three chime up front so not too far out of reason honestly there's a smokestack no smoke unit is included in this locomotive sadly 
And here's the top of the rear radiator section. I mean, it's all molded in plastic, but it looks the part. It looks really good. So I turned the engine over just so you can take a look at the underbody. One thing I'm really glad to see for a starter set engine, dual pickup rollers. In O-Gage, this can be funky, especially if you're working with a smaller locomotive. One pickup roller can kind of kill your progress in its tracks. So having two pickup rollers on each truck is a very nice thing. Cutting to the fuel tank, you can see there's the Bluetooth emblem showing, of course, it's got a little Bluetooth on board. The fuel tank cut out for the speaker. The sound on and off switch. We'll take a look at the front truck just so you can see. Both pickup rollers intact, very basic coupler, and there is a screw right here in the event your coupler does break and you need to replace it. We'll just cut over the engineer side real quick so you guys can see. Like I said, printing looks good. You only see a few little flubs like in the cracks, but that's to be expected. Overall, the printing is really clean. So just for fun, and of course I would have this on hand, here is the HO scale equivalent in the form of the Scale Trains Rivet Counter GE2015. This is detailed to the max and what hopefully we'll get one day in O-Gage. This is just to show you guys that Lionel did not miss the mark much with the starter set piece. This is a nice, admirable effort. The printing looks good, the colors are close, of course this is a little bit brighter, but it looks really, really nice. They haven't got the stripe details right. So, again, I'll give you a few side-by-side -side shots so you guys can just check out for fun because you're not going to see something like this in too many other places. Alright, so for the stack cars, we're going to make this easy. We're going to examine one out of the three because they're all identical, minus one with the EOT, and they look really, really good. So, just like in the first part, we're going to take a look at the EOT car, and I'm going to show you guys how to attach the containers together. Alright, so first impressions of the cars. The yellow is nice. It's a little darker here on camera. This is, of course, yellow plastic. So, the finish is going to look weird depending on your lighting. But overall, this is a really nice representation of a TTX 48-foot well car, albeit compressed for O-Gage. So we'll take it back a little bit further and we'll take a look at the containers. These of course are sublettered for EMP. They're listed as 53 foot containers, but, but they're not legit 53s. These are very, very basic. In the box of the locomotive, there's a little baggie with traction tires and these little black plugs. So all you do is take it and then pop it in. You'll probably want to do the short side in because I had a, little, a lot less resistance doing that. And there you go. Just do that all four corners and however you want to set your stack train up. And once the pins are in, you can just take it, drop it down. You'll hear a little click. And then you can pick up both containers pretty easily. They are still detachable, so you don't have to worry about the connections being uber tight. You or your kids will be able to handle these very, very easily in the event of a derailment. One really cool thing, the amount of printing on this car is really nice. They didn't skimp on... Even it being a starter set car, they did not skimp on the printing. You can see the load limits, the reporting marks, your total weight markings. It even carries on around the TTX reporting marks. So not an interchange card, load limit per unit. You've got the capacity sticker. And of course in the corner, like most Lionel cars, you've got the Lionel build date and product number. All right, now for the fun stuff, operations. So real quick, I'm going to show you how to hook the track up, get the locomotive going. We'll test it on both on the Lion Chief remote and Bluetooth so you guys can see what you're getting into. But in terms of connecting the track, we'll show you real quick and easy. All you do is plug the transformer into your outlet, take the power wire, hook to your track, and you are good to go. So the chirping noise is the locomotive searching for a Bluetooth signal, whether you do the Lion Chief remote or the phone. So one thing to note, this locomotive has very bright lighting. You've got a cab light, number board light, and a very bright front and rear headlights, which are directional. Here's the horn and bell. Yeah. 
So all in all, this Cruise Hawk is a big improvement over previous generations. Of course, it's going to have a little bit of cheese, it's just the nature of the feature. But the cool thing is the announcements do change when you're moving versus standing still. So I turn power off so I can talk a little bit easier, but overall I think this is a step in the right direction. It's kind of cool, you know, mixing things up, having a female engineer on the crew chatter, and also more realistic crew dialogue. So you've got, you know, three-step application, the mile markers. This is a big step compared to the basic, you know, dispatch clear for departure that we've heard throughout Lionel's rail sounds. So even on the RC line, this is a very nice carryover. And yes, for you eagle-eared viewers, you will hear the startup sounds from the latest run of uh, Legacy ES44, so another nice touch in my opinion. One thing I wanted to cover while I had the locomotive parked in terms of control, uh, you can either again do it through Bluetooth or the Lion Chief remote. Now this is what you get, it should be noted, unless you get the universal remote, the remotes are mated to the locomotive. Mine, strangely, is a little sticky, so you may run into this problem. It is not wanting to be very flexible without using both fingers. Just for comparison, here's one from my 726 Berkshire. Nice and easy, no problems there. So this one's a little bit stiff. I don't know if just because that was a Lion Chief plus locomotive versus the starter set, but you can see it's a little finicky. All right, so now we'll show you how to do the Lion Chief app. Bluetooth is already on. This is on the Android version, of course, Samsung Galaxy S20 FV. So we're gonna go into the Lion Chief app, Okay, so we're going to click OK. Here's your throttle, direction, options for the locomotive, your sound options, your couplers if applicable, horn, bell, and crew talk. And it should be noted on the sounds of both the horn and bell, I raised and lowered the pitch just a little bit to sound a bit better. So in order to find our locomotives, we're going to go to the top, click this, there's 2015, ready to go. And we'll hit this button to connect. And of course in the Lion Chief app you can adjust all the stuff you want to do like putting a speed limit on, your momentum, this all resets whenever you do the locomotive on and off so in this case we're going to cut the speed down because this thing is quick. I'm going to give it medium momentum, no smoke is applicable and exit out.
And there you have it, guys. That about brings us to the end of this review. But before I close out, I'll give you a few final thoughts on this set, what I think of it overall, and the pricing. So retail on this set out of the gate is $339.99. Now, that said, most hobby retailers will give you a little bit of a break on that, but you'll have to do shipping if you don't have one locally. I've seen prices ranging from $319 to about $340, $350 after shipping. So you can get this about anywhere. Overall, I think this is a very nice value for a modern starter set. Again, like I said in the beginning, most modern freight, you're going to see more stack trains and unit trains than old school manifests, which there's still all, there will still always be a place for that. But I think this is a really cool set to bring a stack train to the market. To do a set with the demonstrator, that's an awesome thing to me. And I think overall, with the Oval Attract, Lion Chief, Bluetooth equipped locomotive, you're getting a nice deal for the money. I will say, if you are interested in this set, Hang tight. Demand, I think, has been a little across the board. Just because it was such an unexpected set to do a demonstrator and a stack train, I think you'll be able to get your hands on one pretty soon. In fact, I've seen the locomotives for sale on eBay, but they come to about $250 after shipping. So I say spend the extra 100 bucks, get the track, get the cars, have more fun with this set. I hope this is informative in your buying decisions, or if you just wanted to see a video of this set in action, here you go. I thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you next time.